welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Reno and today's video is going to be another entry to my video series here on YouTube that I call the Olfactory Library where I share to everyone here my love for fragrances. For the longest time now, I have been so excited to make this video right here because today we are going to talk about my favorite iris perfumes that I have in my collection. Now iris in the last couple of years have been slowly becoming my one of my most favorite perfume notes. It is slowly inching behind rose as my most favorite perfume note and I have been wanting to do this for the longest time now but I have been waiting for this one perfume that I just recently got which is weird because I have sort of shunned this perfume for a while. I don't know maybe because it's become too famous. I am talking about Jo Om Intense which I recently got last month when I went to Sydney. When I realized that I am slowly falling in love with the notavirus, I know I had to wait for this one and see where this is going to fall in my favorites list and obviously now that this one is here obviously this is going to be in this list and watch out where in the list this one falls but before we get into the list i am going to talk about two perfumes that i recently sampled first we are going to talk about Eris Malikan by Mason Crivelli which is a very famous niche iris perfume right now in the perfume community. I was able to sample it when I was in Sydney as well but to me I couldn't get the hype around it because almost immediately the way that this is done it was kind of off-putting to me. It is very reminiscent of Lube Rouge by Christian Louboutin but it is a lot more intense, slightly darker and a lot more drier than that. I didn't feel the need to add that into my collection just yet because I know that I will be coming back here in the Philippines and the way that that DNA is done is I knew that I wouldn't be grabbing for it that much because it's a little bit too intense but don't get me wrong I like it and definitely one day I will be adding that into my collection of iris perfumes. And the next perfume that I'm going to talk about is Givenchy Gentleman Reserve Privé. Almost immediately I was taken aback because of how intensely boozy the perfume is. It's probably the booziest of all the perfumes that I have ever put my nose on but the dry down of that perfume is just so magical. I will be adding that into my collection very soon. That is actually my very next purchase. So to start officially with the list at number 10 we have from Armani Privé and this is Ika Rouge. This perfume contains keynotes of bergamot, incense, iris, and amber. I love this perfume so much. It smells like a warm baby powder on the skin and it is in number 10 because this is discontinued already. This is a limited edition bottle and I think for the performance it gives me this is very much number 10 because it gives you a very tight scent bubble. This is the kind of iris that smells like baby powder but not in a very juvenile kind of way. It is very sensual but it's really not that powdery and I really love that kind of iris but it is number 10 because I just enjoy the other perfumes in this list much more than this one. Next up we're going to the house of Tiffany & Co and this is Tiffany & Co Intense. This perfume has keynotes of bear, iris, vanilla, musk, and amber. If you've smelled the original Tiffany & Co Eau de Parfum, this perfume in my opinion smells very different than that because it has a very intense iris. That one is a lot more sparkly, clean, kind of citrusy. This one is a lot more focused on the iris and the florals. Well, less about the supporting florals but definitely a lot more about the violets and the iris. And the iris that is used here is slightly leaning towards the more cosmetic -y direction but it's definitely still very unisex. There's something about this perfume, I think the fruit notes I guess, that's giving you that syrupy quality and also gives you that warmth at the same time. A lot of people have said this is sort of reminiscent to Dio Om or Dio Om Intense but to me they couldn't be any more wrong. The iris that's used here probably a little bit similar but the entire perfume DNA is very different. This is slightly powdery but it's not as powdery as Dio Om Intense but I still love this perfume very very much. Although this leans a little bit more floral, this leans a little bit more feminine but personally I enjoy it and I think this can still be very much considered as a unisex perfume. At number 8 we are going to the house of Diptyque and this is Elio. This perfume has keynotes of Iris, 
prickly pear, jasmine, and bergamot. I love this perfume so much. It's very perfect for the high heat. And this is very perfect for now, especially it's summertime. This perfume has a slightly powdery iris, but overall how this perfume smell like because of the prickly pear especially. If you are familiar with Byredo's Mojave Ghost, replace a lot of the florals in that perfume with iris, you will be getting Ilio. But I think this perfume is a lot more watery, a lot more fruitier than Mojave Ghost which I think really makes this perfume a perfect summer perfume. So if you haven't tried this perfume yet, today, this season, this month is the perfect time for you to try this perfume out. Next up, we're going to the house of Gucci and this is Tears of Iris. This perfume has keynotes of Iris, Angelica, Musk, and Sandalwood. Now this perfume is the reason why I don't agree when a lot of people say, Oh, Duo Home Intense smells like someone's cosmetic or lipstick because this to me have become my benchmark for what an Iris could smell like. If we are plainly talking about Iris that smells like cosmetic or lipstick, the way that this perfume is done and the way that the Iris is done in this perfume, when you spray it, this is like I'm giving you iris and it's 1000% not to say that this is a very heavily projecting perfume it's just that the iris here is very rich very makeupy very cosmetic -y. it smells like an intense iris when you first spray it but it's not heavily projecting it's not going to give you a very huge scent cloud and it's not as long lasting the bottle in this alchemist garden collection is very much to die for. I love the apothecary style bottles. I love the cosmetic quality of the iris that's in here. It's blending so well with the musk and the dryness of that sandalwood. The powderiness of the musk is really complementing so well with the iris to give you that lipsticky, cosmeticy character, and I love it for it. Next up, at number six, we are going to the house of Penhaligans, and this is the favorite. This perfume has keynotes of violet, iris, mimosa, musk, and ambroxy. Oh, this perfume is just to die for. Every single time that I talk about this perfume in this channel, I always say that to me, this is a very sparkling, fresh, transparent iris perfume. Probably the best one that I have ever put my nose on as far as transparent, sparkling iris perfumes are concerned. The one note that's very apparent right from the bottle is the note of Ambroxan. It's giving you that sparkling, transparent, watery kind of quality. It feels like whenever I spray this perfume, I feel like I am splashing my face with a water that is infused with iris oils. And the mimosa is very beautiful in this perfume as well. It gives gives that iris the softness that it needs. I enjoyed it for its transparency, its sparkliness, but honestly, this perfume is just really, really good. And finally, we are at my top five. I think this top five is very solid, but who knows, in the very near future, I might update my collection and this list might be shuffled, but at number five, we are going to start with Givenchy Gentleman Cologne. This perfume has keynotes of citruses, pettigrain, iris, vetiver, and musk. Now this perfume was the reason why I did not get the Givenchy Gentleman Reserve Privé because I have already set my eyes on this one. I was browsing the internet one day because of the end of financial year sale and I found this. This is a discontinued perfume and I got this for very very cheap. I think for about $100, $105, $107 something. For the price and the fact that this has already been discontinued, I could not resist but get my own bottle. And ever since I got this perfume, I have loved this and enjoyed this perfume so much. It's a very interesting interesting take on iris with that blast of citrus at the top. It's very refreshing. It's not tart and tangy, but it's very much there. It's slightly bitter because of that pity grain. One of the reasons why I love this perfume so much is the citruses last throughout the longevity of this perfume. So when you wear this, you are going to smell very fresh all throughout the lifetime of this perfume on your skin and on your clothes. And for a cologne, for a cologne concentration, is this a cologne concentration? Oh no, it's an eau de toilette. But it's called Gentleman Cologne. But this is an eau de toilette concentration. This perfume gave me probably max 10 hours. For what it is, especially for a citrus heavy perfume, this perfume lasts so long. And honestly, I don't understand why Givenchy decided to discontinue this one this is i think is a really good addition or a summer offering to that gentleman line in my top four we have a perfume from the house of celine and this is black tie this perfume has keynotes of vanilla oris oak moss musk 
and cedarwood. Now this is probably within my top three favorites from the house of Celine and this perfume to me always smells like a warm vanilla ice cream with dustings of iris at the top and by no means this is a powdery iris probably the same like Duom. no it just has the lace of iris at the top with, that's a very prevalent but overall this just smells like a warm vanilla ice cream to me i know that in the notes breakdown from Fragranica, it doesn't say amber in there but to me i am getting a whole lot of amber in the background that to me that just blends so well with the warmth the vanilla that makes it very almost leaning gourmandish now i think this name really suits this perfume it's called black tie and i think this is also really good for formal events but to me i do prefer for this one more for um, date night more an intimate situation it smells very dressed up and classy and very well put together but this gourmandish quality of the vanilla that is in here i think just really makes this perfume very youthful very vibrant it doesn't smell like a juvenile vanilla perfume at all but just a really vibrant youthful just very upbeat formal perfume next up we are going to the house of christian louboutin and this is Luby Rouge. now this perfume has a really short notes breakdown it contains cardamom iris and vanilla now this perfume bottle is very heavy this cap is almost as heavy as the bottle itself now this as of the moment is my only christian louboutin perfume and in my opinion perhaps the only one that i think that's worth investing now how this perfume smell like this does sort of will remind you of iris malikan by mason Cavelli, but perhaps in a more tamed version of it it's a very beautiful iris perfume that's sprinkled with cardamom at the top and this slightly dry vanilla in the background that just gives this perfume a little bit of sweetness now i know that in fragranica you only have three notes listed there but whenever i wear this perfume or smell it in the blotter card even i am getting a whole lot of cedar wood experience that i think just gives this perfume a little bit of base and depth to this one now this one almost beat out joe home intense in its rank in this list because i really enjoy this perfume so much it almost smells very simplistic but overall this is a very enjoyable iris perfume that you should try and one that smells really exciting even though it smells very linear and smells very simple in the beginning and at number two of course this is from christian Jo. and this is Jo Om intense now this perfume has key notes of iris lavender musk vetiver and cedarwood now this perfume is the latest addition to my collection this was gifted to me as a birthday gift and i got this when i went to sydney and when i got this perfume immediately i fell head over heels with this perfume you know every time i wear this and every time i smell this perfume i am getting this sort of cashmere sort of suede like experience in the background perhaps it's just a combination of the cedar wood and the musk and a lot of the iris but i am getting that experience which i think really really is just so beautiful i don't know what else i can say about this perfume that hasn't been said before this is very bold very confident but never in your face never arrogant this just smells very well put together but of course definitely a confidence booster perfume and at number one if you have been watching my videos you would probably know what this one already this is coming from the house of Frederick mall and this is ludivir this perfume contains keynotes of iris heliotrope honey musk and bergamot now this perfume may not be everybody's cup of tea and i know there will be people who might be coming for me because of why i did not put joe intense as my number one this one just holds a special place in my heart this smells very transparent very sparkly but has a little bit of depth and sweetness coming from the honey this just smells very sensual and at the same time just smells very comforting in fact among all of the iris perfumes that i have in my collection and on this list this one is the one that i would consider the most comforting of all of them and honestly this may not be necessarily the very best investment for anyone to have if i were to recommend anything for you to buy right now because this smells a little bit too simplistic but i think it's just you know if you understand the designer of this perfume which is jean-claude elena creating this perfume for frederick mall you would know that this definitely is 
a Jean-Claude Elena creation. It's simplistic, it's intimate, but definitely very, very romantic. If you just give this perfume a chance, I think you will love this just as much as I do. And that completes today's list. If you are new here, thank you so much for spending time with me today. But if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for tuning back in. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Give this channel a chance. Your like is definitely going to go a long way. It would definitely help me with YouTube's algorithm. And don't forget to hit the notification bell if you want to be notified if I do upload more contents like this in the future. Now, as always, I do hope that wherever you are, you're staying safe, stay curious, and I'll see you on the next one.